Let's get started. Welcome again to my panel, broadcaster Danny Kelly and also columnist and model Lizzie Cundy. First, I want to say welcome, Lizzie. Nice to see you. Pretty in pink. Thank you. I Great almost wore here. pink, then the same as you, similar colour. Well, I go. nearly wore pink. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I saw him change in the gents. Oh, did you? <laughs> I didn't change in the gents. I'm afraid I couldn't be less interested, Danny. I'm sorry about <laughs> I, that. Changing in the gents. <laughs> so, Lizzie, I'm going to start with yes. you then, seeing as you're the first timer on the panel. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think about this whole notion that actually the Labour Party are slightly misguided and that people won't actually vote for them because they've got nothing to offer? Well... I don't think they do. I'm sorry, but I'm not a fan of Starmer. And we need a strong opposition, the Conservative Party. It's really important for, for our country to have someone against you that is doing well. And he, he, he's not strong enough. I, I find him a bit of a joke figure. I, I, and it's a shame, really, because we really do need a strong party to go against, if you, you know, for the Conservatives. And it, it just seems to... He could really seize the moment and he's not doing so, at the, you know, with everything. Uh, he could talk so much about Partygate. Now, I watched mm. Prime Minister Questions and that's literally all he said. And it was like, well, hang on, what is the Labour Party going to offer? Well, if I was to vote for you, what are you going to deliver me? What are you, where's your stance on taxes? Where's your stance on the national insurance hike? I know they've talked about a windfall tax on energy companies. Where do they stand on uh, on the net zero agenda? I, I just I just don't mm. know. I know we've got an economic crisis. Mm. There's, there's so much going on in the world with the war, everything else, and it's all. And I think everyone is getting sick and tired of Partygate, Partygate, mm. Partygate. Oh. It is just getting so weary, mm. and um, <laughs> I, I, I I can't bear it anymore. it's it's worse. Yes. Uh, what doesn't help is the fact that the leader is a knight of the realm now. Labour, there's a clue in the name, Labour, it's for working class people. And a knight of the realm, Islington, Savile Row suits, that doesn't help. In your monologue, Nana, you're right about the fact that they, they can't even clarify their position on whether um, a, a, a woman has a penis or not. And, and to a lot of people, that's trivial, but to a, a lot of people, mm. that's emblematic of maybe the wishy-washy stance mm. on so many things. And once you're in bed with the woke brigade, mm. then... They're not reading the room because the average man and woman, generally speaking, they're more likely to read the Daily Mail and the Sun than they are the Guardian. Mm. And I'm talking about working class voters. I'm a scouser by birth. I live in the Midlands near Coventry in Birmingham and it's working class and it's now conservative E. Mm. It's very Brexity. I know it's conservative E. And if you go to a guy in a pub saying, who do you fancy to vote in Walsall where they've mm. got local elections conservative? Do you fancy voting Labour? The leader can't tell you whether a woman has a penis or not. Mm. Or do you fancy voting for the Conservatives because Boris Johnson has uh, a few bevies during lockdown? But Starmer, he's trying to please the woke brigade, let's be honest, and he's trying to please everyone but pleasing no-one, mm. and that is the problem. Do you think that perhaps the Labour Party have actually decided that they're going for a different target market altogether and that they're not actually bothered about um, the, the sort of normal working class? I mean, Well, they won't get elected if they're not bothered about the working class. They need to go back to the roots, I believe. And it's, it's not mutually exclusive to, to have certain views, geopolitical views and, and views on the climate. It's not mutually exclusive to still have that relationship with that part of politics and also tap into the working class. You know, the working class, you know, there's a clue in the title. They still care about the environment. Mm. But I, I promise you, once you get into bed with the woke mob, like they are at the moment, then it's a downward spiral, in my view. Okay. And I talk to working class people every day of the week in my car business. What, what you, well, Lizzie, what do you think it would take for people to start to vote for them? For them to actually, because the polls keep saying, oh, they're a bit ahead, they're a bit ahead. But I'm, I'm not convinced by the polls in this country. No. They're never accurate. They have to change their leader. I'd say get Andy Burnham in. Yeah. You need someone that is true to his word. Mm. I'm a big fan, always yeah. have been. But people respect and um, not afraid to say what they think. That's and the fact, right, and I think that would be the best solution. And I would definitely then would vote Labour. Yeah, and you would if Andy I would him. vote. I would vote if Andy uh, was in. You see, he's a scouser. He's the greater yep. Manchester mayor, yes. metro mayor, and he doesn't have a title of being a sir. And, and that is tapping into the working class. And he can still have views. I bet you if you cornered him, uh, he would be savvy enough to say, look, I have great sympathy with people who are transitioning. I really do. But biologically, a, a woman cannot have a penis. I think, it, I think well, someone well, needs to make the break. Well, actually, le yesterday I had Debbie Hayton here, and, and uh, she's a transgender woman. She's been through the entire changing process, and she says that uh, trans a transgender woman is not a woman. 
transgender woman is a transgender woman. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. And a woman is a woman. And she, as a transgender female, accepts that that is the narrative. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And she owns that label. And that is fine. Yeah. So doesn't, I don't understand what, what you know, this but is trying to please As we said, isn't? he's trying to please everyone, but pleasing no one. And he, he, they have to change their leader if they're mm. going to win. And if we had a, a, you know, if we did have a ele- general election... They wouldn't get in still, despite Partygate. Mm. Everything no, else, they wouldn't. I still believe mm. Boris would get in. I think the average punter isn't bothered about Partygate. No, I don't think they are. Do you think there's a bit of a hangover from some terrible leaders? I mean, they had Jeremy Corbyn, then they had um, Ed Miliband. They should have picked David, for goodness sake. I don't yeah, know what they I were agree. thinking there. They had Gordon Brown. I mean, you know, mm. and then Tony Blair, who was obviously discredited because of his, his the war in Iraq. Yeah. Which he took was us... Uh, to- to war on a lie, mm. and um, yeah, I, you know, mm. so, but you know, we're all getting sick of party gate now, oh, and it's all we're yeah. hearing, God, and and we, we either, you know, we're waiting for yeah. Sue Gray, we're waiting for the the police, yeah. and now, you know, it, it's just getting too much. We have yeah. to have a sl- they either have to stop, or Boris says himself, let's throw a general election. If yeah. you want me, vote for me. If you don't, I'm off because yeah. it's yeah. it's distracted from everything else. He even goes to India and they're asking the questions about party gate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the you know, party. there are families families there that can't get their, you know, whether to heat or eat at the minute with yeah. everything that's going on. We've got an economic crisis. We've got a war in and Ukraine war. as well. We've got yeah. Vladimir Putin testing out Satan too and talking about how his nuclear warheads can reach us all now and he can strike a load of them all at once mm. and all this nonsense. And people are still obsessing with this party gate nonsense. Do you mm. think that actually part of it is, um, I think part of it is obviously Brexit, but the other side of it, sometimes I think that there are stages of grief And a lot of people have obviously lost people during the pandemic. And I think there's four stages. And one of them is anger. And a lot of people are still trapped in the anger phase and looking for someone to blame. And and this is why we're here. Yeah. And look, he he made the rules and he broke the rules. Mm. And um, I'm sorry, it's terrible. And I I lost a dear friend through the pandemic and I couldn't go to the funeral. You know, and it it, it stays with you. And, uh, you know, we can't turn the clock back. But hey, I ask Lizzie about your, your dear friend's family, how they feel about Partygate. Have you spoken to them about it? Yes, I haven't, actually. I saw them last night. They're absolutely tired of it. Really? They just said, we're... <laughs> Even... They're tired of it. Because everything... Look at what's going on in the world yeah. today and yeah. all we can hear is Partygate and birthday cake. Yeah. You know, it's going on too much. And, and the wow. Labour Party are real instigators behind it. Obviously, it's not alongside some of Boris's own Conservative MPs as well, which they must understand that we've had enough. But mm. mainly the Labour Party, they're really stressing on it so much and just negating to tell us about what they would actually do instead, which I think is a big problem. Yeah.